Hey, everybody. Uh, uh, as Andy said, last year, uh, I talked about adding a zero. This year, I want to talk about adding a one, in particular, Arbitrum One, which is the flagship chain of our Arbitrum technology. I want to give you an update on where we are with Arbitrum and where we're going. Uh, we're at a really exciting time, as you'll see. Uh, so we're adding Arbitrum One to mainnet. Arbitrum One is our flagship chain. Um, the Arbitrum technology can support multiple chains, but Arbitrum One is the one where, we, uh, where we're bringing in the whole community, including DeFi apps and everything else. We launched May 28th on Ethereum mainnet as a beta for dev teams. So that meant that we let in, um, now it's uh, a bit over 400 different dev teams to stand up their, their tech on the Arbitrum One on mainnet. Um, and our strategy was to was is to first stand up a complete ecosystem and then open the beta to the public. So when we open the doors to the shopping mall, all of the stores will be there, will be open. So ecosystem, what do I mean by that? Well, let me give you some examples. As I said, we have had more than 400 teams who have been involved in standing things up and getting ready. Um, here is a, a, here's a list of of, of um, here's a list of teams uh, that have publicly announced that they are on Arbitrum One. So in the ecosystem category, I'm sorry, in the infrastructure category, you have uh, at least these, and you can find your favorite um, infrastructure company on this list. But what you see is, of course, um, major Oracle um, providers like Chainlink, you see Node, uh, Node providers like Alchemy and Infura, you see things like the Graph and Truffle and USDC uh, and so on and so on. Among wallets, uh, these are the 10 that have announced uh, participation at this point. Um, and again, you see major players here. Among dApps, also a very long list. And again, I emphasize these are the ones who have publicly announced. Uh, actually, this is a little bit out of date because I made this yesterday afternoon, and the list of public announcements keeps growing, and we'll expect more as we get closer to the date that we open up. So we're talking about a really big ecosystem, not just one or two uh, dApps or, one, or a little bit. We really wanted to bring the whole community to be open to and part of the Ethereum community uh, as we prepare to go live. And the idea is when we open... Uh, that will have a whole broad ecosystem already there and already available. Okay, so the next question that everyone has been asking us is when will we actually open this thing to developers? Um, and if you've been watching our Twitter, you see that we just today announced that this will be open to the public in August. So we haven't set a specific date, but you can infer that we will open on August 31st or possibly earlier. If we're going to open earlier, we'll announce that. We're not gonna open it. We're not gonna surprise anyone, um, but we have said we will open in August. And just to remind you, when we said that we were going to launch the, the beta for developers, we said we would do it on May 28th and we did it on May 28th. So when we say August, we mean August. So we're really excited about this. It's coming up soon. Um, and you're going to see uh, what that ecosystem looks like. OK, what happens after that? What happens after we open Arbitrum, after people get there? They're using the ecosystem. Things are going great. Everyone is happy about low cost. They're happy about scalability. What happens next? Well, we want to add to one or Arbitrum one. And we're going to do that in three main ways. First. We're gonna make it faster, cheaper, and more scalable. That's what we're all about. That's why people wanna use layer two technologies, the speed, the low cost, and the scalability. Um, but there are some more zeros we can add to speed and scalability and some zeros we can take away from cost in that area. More security diligence in this, in this world, you can never have enough security diligence. We're gonna keep sweating those details. We're going to keep working with, uh, with people to make sure that we're doing what we can in that space. Um, and then third, over time, to remove the security controls we'll have in place when we launch in order to fully decentralize the system. When we launch, um, as, we've said, um, as we've said online, when we launch, we will have security controls in place 
um, that give us things like upgrade keys so that we could deal with any situations that might arise. But of course, uh, that's just a temporary state of affairs uh, as we fully decentralize and move to something that is um, that is not centrally controlled by us in any way. So decentralize everything. What does that mean? Well, here are a set of steps that we're taking to decentralize things. First, we're going to allow anyone to deploy contracts, and that will be in place when we open um, uh, later in August. We'll allow anyone to submit transactions also when we open later in August. During the developer beta, uh, the ability to deploy a contract to submit transactions has been limited to those 400 plus dev teams who have been participating in, uh, in this period. Uh, but when we open, anyone will be able to do those things. We'll allow anyone to be an aggregator. An aggregator is a party that acts as a node and helps users submit transactions to Arbitrum 1. And uh, on the day we open, anyone will be able to be an aggregator. Um, over time, later, we'll move to a situation where anyone can be a validator. In the beginning, um, validators, and those are the parties who are involved in making sure that the execution of the protocol is correct, that contracts do what they're programmed to do. Um, in the beginning, that's going to be permissioned. Um, but over time, we'll both we'll first expand the permission set um, and then eventually allow anyone to be a validator so that the function of ensuring correctness on Arbitrum is uh, fully trustless. Um, and then uh, finally, we'll decentralize the sequencer. The sequencer is a component of the system. Well, let me talk about this, allowing decentralizing the sequencer. So the sequencer is the component of Arbitrum um, that, uh, that takes transactions that users send and as the name sequencer would suggest, the sequencer takes those transactions and puts them into order, establishes an ordering on them, and then submits batches of transactions to the chain's inbox from which they'll be processed by the Arbitrum chain efficiently and scalably. So the sequencer has a couple of jobs. One thing it does is it does this batching, which is one of the secrets to, making, um, uh, to providing scalability and low cost. But the sequencer also has, um, has power to establish the order on these transactions. So uh, why is that important? Well, so right, so users can send transactions to the sequencer, and when you send a transaction to the sequencer, you'll get back the result of your transaction in about one second, give or take. So much faster than the block time of Ethereum, which is the underlying, uh, underlying chain. If you're, building, if you're using Ethereum natively, the best you can hope for is to know, is to get a, an idea of what the result of your transaction is after one block. But then if there's a reorganization of the chain, it might actually take longer. So you have to wait for confirmations. That's not a great user experience, waiting 15 seconds or a few minutes for a result. With the sequencer, you can get the result, result of your transaction back in about a second, which is the kind of user experience that people expect for modern technology. Now, the way that the sequencer is able to do that is that the sequencer can control transaction ordering within limits. It can't censor your transactions. It can't keep them out. But the sequencer has a limited ability to control the order of transactions. And that's how it is able to give you that very fast response. In order to know what the result of your transaction is, that uh, you need to know which transactions happened before it? Because you know what happens with your transaction depends on the state of the chain, which was established by the things in front of it. So the sequencer can control transactions ordering enough so that it can give you a guarantee of how your transaction will be ordered, and therefore it can it, therefore it can give you a promise of the result in order of a second. So that's super useful. Um, now, there's a bunch of advantages to this, to having a sequencer, and this is why we have a sequencer. The first huge advantage is a fast response time. You can go a lot faster than the response time, than the block time of the underlying layer one. But then second, an honest sequencer can help protect users against front running. One of the big problems, and if you're an Ethereum user, especially if you use DeFi, you know this, one of the big problems is front running and the possibility that a miner or somebody else will front run your transactions and that basically takes money out of your pocket. So an honest sequencer 
can sequence the incoming transactions fairly, like first come, first served, and not front run you in order to, uh, in order to, uh, to shave down the value of your transactions. That's the pro. The con of having a sequencer um, in the uh, having a centralized sequencer, as we're doing um, initially at launch, is that if the sequencer is malicious, it can extract value from you by front running. In fact, the sequencer will be better, will have more opportunity to front run than even a miner would have because it has that expanded control over order. So in the beginning, we off-chain labs, the Arbitrum team will run the sequencer on Arbitrum 1. We, we are running the sequencer on Arbitrum 1. And we will do that honestly first come, first serve, so that you don't need to worry as much about front running. Um, but long run, you don't want to have to trust us or any single party to behave um, as an honest sequencer. So how do we decentralize this? Well, there are basically two responses to front running to, to the risk of a front running sequence or the concern. Um, the first one is a so-called MEV auction. The idea there is that you would auction off the right to be the sequencer, and then whoever is the high bidder gets to be the sequencer, and then they do what they want. Well, you apply a, some simple economics to this. What it says is that in that auction, the high bidder is going to be the party who is most effective at squeezing value out of users. Whoever can front run most efficiently, most effectively, and shave the most money off of user transactions, they are the one who wants to be the sequencer the most, and they'll be the high bidder. So we don't like that approach. We like instead the approach of decentralizing the sequencer, maintain the enhanced fairness of having a sequencer while decentralized. So how do you do that? Well, um, you've heard some about this at, um, uh, at, this, uh, at this event already, um, but um, really a landmark in thinking about that was this particular paper that came out of Cornell Tech. Um, and you'll note that the, who the last two authors are. The third author, Stephen Goldfeder, is my co-founder at Offchain Labs, the CEO of our company, and uh, obviously one of the leaders of the Arbitrum team. And of course, the fourth co-author is Ari Jules, who is, um, uh, who is chief scientist at, at Chainlink. So uh, we have the expertise in, um, in the Arbitrum team and of course, Chainlink as well to know how to address this. So how does this work? Well, basically the idea is instead of a single sequencer, and you've heard about this before, of course, you have a fair sequencing service. You have a set of sequencers, a committee, if you will. And the guarantee that you give is that um, if a supermajority of these sequencers are honest, then you will get fair sequencing, even if some of them are dishonest or malicious, uh, right? Same user experience as using a centralized sequencer, except now you don't have to trust any centralized party. Now, that research paper, uh, first of all, it defined what it means for a sequencing service to be fair in a lot of technical detail with a lot of precision. Um, and then showed that it's possible to build a fair sequencing service like this. But the results in that paper, although they were an excellent existence proof, were not really efficient enough to do in practice. Um, and this is where ongoing research is really exciting. Uh, and there are folks doing research on this. Um, the, the Chainlink Labs team is working on this, uh, building a fair sequencing service. Um, we're excited by the research in this area. We're excited by what our team is doing. We're excited by what the Chainlink Labs team is doing. Uh, and we're watching very carefully what, what they're doing. Uh, and, we hope, and, and we hope to see that that, uh, tech, that that technology reaches the point where we can collaborate on figuring out how to roll it out on Arbitrum, because this is a service of the type that we really need and that we think our users will really benefit from. So what else are we doing? Well, I have limited time, um, but the summary is faster, cheaper, and more scalable. There's a lot more besides decentralization that we're doing. We've talked about some of it before. I talked about some of it um, uh, at, uh, at the previous SmartCon, um, but, um, but we have a bunch of exciting things going on here. We have uh, what we call the Arbitrum sidechains or channels tech, which we're building, and we have a bunch of other things that are in the pipeline. And I'm really excited to talk with the community about this over time going forward. Right now, though, we're it is August, and we are focused on that August launch. We're really excited to open the doors and have the public experience what Arbitrum can do. This is the culmination of years of work by our team. 
Um, and it's really what we have been focused on um, for, for quite some time. So we're really excited to see this coming. We'll be talking more about how it's going to work. We'll see more announcements of other teams um, going. Um, but really, we're focused on that day, and we can't wait for uh, the day that we release Arbitrum and you and the rest of the community see what it can do. So with that, um, I will stop and thank you, and we're hiring. Thank you so much, Ed. Always appreciate your insights and uh, announcements. Excited for the month of August. We're in August. It's right here. So um, uh, fantastic news. 